Hi guys, so I just got back from seeing a movie. I saw um, The Jungle Cruise, it was really good. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Um, like I said before, I was gonna make a bit video to tell um, younger people how to, how I feel like they should, you know, just instruction to properly wash yourself. Um, and it's for any gender. Um, again, I want to throw out a disclaimer. This is not medical advice. And if you're under 18, please um, talk with your parent first and make sure it's okay. And if you have any health conditions, um, talk with your doctor before you take any advice. This is not medical advice. This is just my personal routine and what I've taught my children. Because you'd be surprised how many people really don't know. Um, well, I should say young people how to properly wash themselves. So what you do, first of all, is you want to have two washcloths. Um, and I feel like the thinner washcloths work better, like the more rough ones, not those really thick plush ones, but either one will work. Um, I personally like to use a darker washcloth for my body and a white washcloth or a beige one, a lighter one for my face. Um, you can get bar soap or you can get um, liquid body soap, like body wash. I personally use fragrance free and um, color free. So no dye, no fragrance. Um, especially for ladies, you definitely don't want to use anything with fragrance or color. And um, so what you do obviously in the shower is you get your body wet and um, you can start with using oh and also for your face you want to use like a um a liquid i feel like a liquid face wash that's particularly for your face that's not gonna be too harsh or harm your face um and uh uh yeah it's just something that's uh really not harmful for your face and so what I typically do, and we won't talk about washing your hair for this one, but what I typically do is, um, obviously you have your hair up and out of the way or you wash your hair first, but I uh, take, get, you know, you get yourself wet, you're in the shower, you um, use a couple of pumps of the facial wash and um, get your face nice and lathered up with your hands and then you get your washcloth and you rinse it out, the one for your face, really hot. Well, not really hot, as warm as you can stand it. You don't wanna be careful not to burn yourself. And you wring it out very tightly and you wipe all of the soap off of your face. You wash in your ears, and I, sh I shouldn't say wash, but you with the washcloth and behind your ears, you always wanna get behind your ears and you wanna get your neck really well, the front and the back, and then, now, another thing you can do too, is you can also incorporate a puff. Um, I personally like to use all three, like the washcloth for the face, the washcloth for the body, and a puff. Um, the puff can kind of like help exfoliate your skin too. I don't use a puff on my face, but I do use it on my body. So um, then what I personally like to do, but again, this may just be too many steps. You can just do this purely with the two washcloths. So again, you have your face washcloth. You wanna make sure you rinse your face off and in your ears and behind your ears really well. And um, always get behind your ears when you're washing yourself and washing your face, I should say. And you wanna get your neck and behind your neck really well. So then you take your puff or your washcloth. If you're going to incorporate a puff, you need to obviously just use liquid um, body wash. So you pour a um, probably like a quarter size amount on it because it can um, lather up really well. Um, and this again is only if you're gonna be using the puff and the washcloth um, procedure. <laughs> so then you take that and you, once it's all lathered up and you wash your arms, front and back, your hands, the back of your neck, the front of your neck, your chest, reach back and wash your back, like the top portion of your shoulders, your underarms really well, the lower part of your back and reach up into your back too. Now I actually have a bath, a back washer, but you don't need to have one. You just reach around both areas and get your back really well. You obviously get your bottom really well and you wanna get the front part of yourself really well too. 
And you always want to, um, you know, gently wash the areas like the crevices of all of your body, every little piece of your body. You want to wash your thighs, your feet, in between your toes, your hands, and then you rinse yourself off. And then, now again, you can skip the part of the puff if you want, but, um, uh, so that was just how to do the puff, but going back to the washcloth. So then you get your darker washcloth, you get it really wet, and you put liquid soap, or you um, squish up a, um, I shouldn't say squish up, you lather up a bar of soap um, in your washcloth and get it nice and sudsy. And you do the same exact procedure where you wash your neck, the front, the back, your chest, your back. And with a washcloth, you can actually even use it as a back washer by, um, after you get your whole body really well, you can take one corner um, at the top of your shoulder and then another corner at the bottom of your lower back, you know, on each side with your hands and just kind of go wash back and forth, make that kind of motion and do that in the back as well. And that can get your back really clean. So going back to the washcloth, you're gonna wash your neck, your back, your arms, and you're doing a circular motion or, you know, up and down motion um, when you're washing. And um, you wanna make sure you really get your underarms really well and the parts where you would perspire or like obviously the parts where you use the bathroom. Again, you wanna be careful not to hurt yourself and wash too hard, um, you know, like with the friction, but you definitely wanna get yourself clean and get in between those little creases, okay, gently. And um, then you want to rinse out your washcloth after you're all lathered up and in between your toes and your feet and everything. Now the part about your feet is you wanna be really careful that you don't have soap on the bottom of your feet um, and you slip and fall in the bath because that can be dangerous and it can be very slippery. But um, you can do one foot at a time and rinse it. Now then you rinse your washcloth really well and always rinse your puff and your face washcloth as well. Rinse it out really well and hang it in a dry place, like a place to dry, like in your shower, like a hook. Um, if you don't have a hook, that's okay. Um, even if you don't have a towel rack, that's okay. You can actually hang it on the shower rod when you're done um, so that it can be dry by the next day for you to shower. Um, so you're gonna back to the washcloth. You're gonna make sure you really clean under your underarms really well. And then um, after you clean your whole body with the washcloth and you're nice and lathered up, you wanna rinse your washcloth out with the really warm water till there's no more soap coming out of it. You wanna keep it really sloppy wet kinda. And you wanna do that same motion as you're in the shower rinsing your body with the water you want to rinse your body off with the washcloth too. And you want to do that until you don't have any more soap residue on you, okay? And then if you're lucky enough to have a shower head that attach, detaches, you can rinse your body off like your neck and everything and all of the parts um, to make sure that all the soap is off. If not, make sure that you rinse really well with your washcloth and standing in the shower and putting your arms up. Now at the end, you're always gonna rinse out both washcloths really well, okay? Sometimes the shower water is not strong enough to do that, so you might have to just use the bath faucet water at the end of your bath when you turn off the, the shower, and you wanna wring out your washcloth to the point where you feel like it's almost dry, okay? And then, like I said, that's when you hang it up. And um, if you don't have a hook or a shower rack, then you can um, or excuse me, or a towel rack, then you can hang it over the, the bar and um, then it can be dry by the morning. Now, um, you after you dry off, as you're getting out of the shower, you want to grab your towel. You can have it like on a rack near your shower or you can even sit it on the toilet with the lid down. Um, and as you're getting out of the shower, before you step onto the ground, onto a towel or a rug or the bare floor, you want to dry your toes off as you're going and your whole foot. This way you can avoid getting the floor wet and you wanna do this one foot at a time. So it's kind of a balancing act. And it's you know something that you get used to, but you wanna start drying that foot off as you step out of the shower 
And, um, but actually, let me back up. Before you even do that portion, you wanna dry your whole body off, okay? Um, make sure you got all the water off. Um, and then, like you know, starting with your neck, face, whatever, all the way down towards the bottom. And when you get down to your, after you've done your thighs and your bottom and all that stuff, then when you get ready to step out of the shower, that's when you, as you step that foot out, you're drying the foot off like this, this kind of motion. You're drying it off like that with the towel, only obviously you're using both hands. And then that foot is the one that goes onto the ground, that dry one outside of the, the shower. Um, after you've dried yourself off, now some people don't like to dry off with towels, they like to air dry. But you still wanna do that process for your feet so that you don't get the floor all wet, okay? If you wanna air dry. After your body's dry and you hang your towel up, you've got to hang your towel up so that it doesn't get um, a mildewy odor to it and so that it dries properly. And that's the same with the washcloths. That's why I said wring them out like to where they're almost dry feeling. You don't want them like loosely wet and saturated, I should say. Anyway, so after you do that, um, in, your, in the bathroom, you wanna put your deodorant on, okay? And then you want to put lotion on. Um, it's always good to use a face lotion for your face and good to use one that has um, sunblock in it, even if you're gonna go to sleep. And you wanna make sure that you're using a face lotion that does not clog your pores. Um, because especially if you're younger or even some people that are older, um, certain types of lotions that clog pores can cause you to have more acne. So you don't want to do that. You wanna make sure that it's one that does not clog pores and it'll say that on the bottle. And um, again, either a very light fragrance or a fragrance free is probably best for you because you don't wanna get anything in your eyes um, or um, harm your skin because your skin on your face is very sensitive and it should always be soft. Um, then you want to put lotion on your whole body um, like your arms, legs, chest, um, you can your shoulders, your neck. You can do the face lotion on your neck. That's actually probably a better idea. And um, you know your bottom, your stomach, your legs and your feet, and especially your heels and your toes. And you wanna put on some house shoes if you're gonna be at home or if you're leaving for the day, you put lotion on your feet as right before you put your sock on, okay? And then you can later put your shoe on. But you don't wanna walk around the house barefoot, even if your house is super, super clean and your floors are really clean, just because you don't wanna have your feet on the bare ground because it they can attract dirt and get just little particles on them and you can hurt your foot. So you wanna definitely put on like a house shoe or a slipper, something like that. Um, even flip-flops or something, but I think you can even get house shoes at the dollar store, so. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, if anybody has any questions or wants any clarifying ideas about what to do, just um, please feel free to leave a comment and I will definitely address it. Um, and I wanted to say too, um, you can always get a fragrance-free, dye-free soap in a bar or liquid form for a pretty inexpensive price. The most that you should pay or would probably need to pay for a bottle of body wash that's fragrance-free and um, dye-free, this is how you can do it. You can get a store brand, okay? And most, like for example, there's a Vino body wash, right? And that's pretty pricey. It's like seven or eight dollars. Well, six to eight dollars, depending on where you go, for a bottle of body wash that's just a standard size. If you get the store brand at whatever store that you're at, it's gonna be like three dollars and fifty, sixty cents. Okay. So and it's works just as well. And again, that's the one that's the fragrance free and color free. And same with the bar of soap. You can get a bar of soap, like a Dove, and I'm not endorsing any particular brand of soap, but anything that's fragrance-free 